Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering a 4100 ES programming from scratch. This video will cover the basic system setup. What we're gonna do is the following. Number one, we're gonna need a simplex programming tool. In our case, it's gonna be 2.04. This is the latest and the greatest from simplex. In addition, we're gonna need the technician who completed uh, the programming course with a security dongle. Without further ado, we're going to click File, New. We have two options over here, uh, 4100 ES with SPS, which is a system power supply, and 4100 ES with EPS, which is expansion power supply. What is the difference? SPS is basically uh, designed to work with all uh, conventional horns, strobes, and horn strobes while EPS is designed to be used on all addressable horns, strobes, and horn strobes. In our case, we're going to use SPS. We're going to provide a general name. We're going to click OK. We're going to click No. Under description, we're going to type one, two, three, main. Over here, you allowed space. Okay, you can further fill it up. However, for the tutorial purposes, we're going to move into system options over here at the bottom. I'm going to click yes, it's completed. And under general tab over here, uh, we're going to choose time format in several 12 hours. I like to use a military time which makes it a 24 you could choose between Fahrenheit and centigrade and I like to uh, use a Fahrenheit acknowledge a uh, option we have two options global and individual what is the differences the differences is the fact that individual upon any fire alarm trouble alarm or supervisory uh, the only way we have to go and acknowledge each and every single annunciator or every single node while global will acknowledge any of them from any location and the standards we have two UL designed for the American standard ULC designed for the Canadian standard therefore we're gonna choose the ULC standard over here we're gonna choose system re service reset uh, combine alarm and hardware reset and display first alarm then we're going to check mark under alarm silence inhibit. We're going to leave 60 seconds as a default. The AC fail, we're going to change it from 2 hours into 5 minutes. And we're going to uncheck all the reminders with exception to trouble reminder. Then under reoccurring trouble, we're going to have to leave it as a zero. What's a reoccurring trouble filter to begin with? Basically, if there is a reoccurring identical trouble, three of them within one uh, one uh, sixty minute within the sixty minutes, which makes it one hour, it, the panel automatically by default will uh, activate a latching a reoccurring trouble filter on the actual panel. The only way to reset it is by click system reset. In addition, under audio, we're gonna change it from United States into the Canadian version. And we're going to move into passcode assignment. Under passcode assignment, we're going to change level 4 password. We have additional 15 users we could use. Uh, all you have to do is just click under either one of them. We're going to provide them with the proper user level. In our case, I want to give him level 3. Password, I want to give him 555 as a password gonna click apply okay gonna go back to general tab click yes under hardware we're gonna go into unit 0 under box 1 box with one bay we're gonna right click on it we're gonna go into properties we're gonna change it into a three box with three bays gonna click apply 
and expand everything. And in uh, bay number two, we're gonna have a digital audio card, four Fire Phones, and one uh, relay, flat relay. So what we're gonna do, under audio, we're gonna find our digital audio controller. We're gonna drag it into bay number two. Together with four Fire Phones, which is going to be right over here. One, two, three, and four. And additional relay, which is going to be over here. This is going to be eight point flat relay. And we're done with bay number two. Now we're going to move into bay number three. Bay number three, we're going to have an XPS, which is expansion power supply and two flex 50 70 volts so XPS is right over here make sure you're picking up the Canadian version with the CAN at the end okay we're gonna right click on it we're gonna choose properties we're gonna move it into slot 35 click apply click OK then we're gonna choose under audio the flex 50 70 volts we're gonna drop two and we're done with this box what we're we gonna do now is gonna right click we're gonna add additional box with three base click ok we're gonna expand under box uh, number one it's going to be the same configuration as previously so what we're going to do is the following we're going to choose the uh, xps canadian over here we're going to drag it into bay number one right click on it properties change it into three five slot number three five we're going to click yes then we're going to drag to flex 50 70 volts to bay number one okay then we're gonna go into bay number two bay number two will do the same configuration flex 50 Canadian one XPS over here we're gonna right click on it properties change into slot 35 apply Okay, yes, I'm going to go into audio, two flex 50 70. There you go, one and two. Now we're going to go into the last bay over here. What we're going to do is the following XPS 120 is the first. Right click, properties, I'm going to change into slot 35. Then we're going to go into audio, flex 50 70, 1, 2. Basically, over here, we've done with the box number 1. What we're going to do, we're going to add additional unit for the actual enunciator. Each enunciator will require to have its own dedicated uh, unit therefore we're gonna right click over here add additional three boxes over here there you go click OK expand so for bay number one we're gonna have a basic tick and an LCD annunciator basic tick is Gonna be under interface. We're gonna choose basic tick transporter. I'm gonna drag it into bay number one. Together with LCD annunciator, which is 9101. There you go. Into bay number two. What are we gonna have? We're gonna have a 64 LED switch, microphone enclosure, 3-8 channel audio controller, and two a button and yellow LED. So we're gonna start 
with the 64 switch that's going to be available under an the card we're going to drag it into bay number two together with microphone enclosure right over here 3-8 channel audio controller right over here and we're going to have two additional 28 yellow LED button switch. So there you go. Perfect. Bay number three will include of RPS 64 LED switch controller, master phone, 28 button, 8 yellow LED, and three red LEDs. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go. We're gonna close everything. We're gonna go into power. We're going to choose RPS, which is the Canadian version. We're going to drag it to bay number three. Perfect. Then we're going to drag the 64 LED controller. Then we're going to go into master phone. There you go. Two eight, eight, and this is the yellow LED. So we're gonna call one and two. Perfect. And we're gonna have eight red, uh, three red LEDs. One, two, three. Okay. What we're gonna do next? We're gonna go into the microphone enclosure double click on it under data entry we're gonna assign as remote mic audio controller input number one click yes we're gonna go into 38 channel audio controller we're gonna change the to smpl the owning to smpl there are two ones over here okay a uh, over here what we're gonna do, we're gonna change it into TS page. We're gonna call it list 90. List 90 is our speaker. On, we're gonna leave it as list 90. Perfect. I'm gonna click apply. I'm gonna click OK. Complete it, yes. Then we're gonna go to our digital audio controller over here. We're gonna go under data entry and we're gonna click firefighter's phone and remote microphone apply okay I'm gonna click complete it as yes I'm gonna click file save we're gonna leave it as my initial at the moment perfect we'll see you guys in video number two